There are two types of quilters in this world. Yeah. Those that love Tula Pink and those that could probably live without her fabric. And if I'm being completely honest with you, until I took this challenge, I'll tell you, I was probably in that latter camp. Hey friends, happy Tuesday. Today is Tuesday, June 13th, 2023. And oh my goodness, do I have a wonderful story for you today. A couple of months ago, I took a challenge with my friends, Teresa, Tiffany, and Ian over on Tiffany's channel. I will link to that video in the show notes down below if you want to check it out. And we challenged all of ourselves, we challenged each other to make a quilt that featured the line work fabric in the form of a layer cake. You see, last year in 2022, Tiffany went to QuiltCon in Phoenix, and while she was there, she picked up a layer cake of line work for herself and one for me, and we had always intended to do something together in a collab with those layer cakes, and it just really never happened. And over time, that kind of evolved into a collab with Ian, and then a collab with Teresa. And then before we knew it, all four of us were in on this challenge. The rules were really, really simple. We would start the project on Tiffany's live stream. We had to feature that layer cake. And then we could bring in whatever coordinating fabric we wanted and choose any pattern we wanted to. And at the end, when the project was done, we had to show it off on our channel. Well, my project is fully finished, minus the label. Do you have to do that? but it is quilted, it's bound, and it's even been washed a couple of times, and I am ready to show it with you. But before I do, I want to talk a little bit about the story of how this quilt came together. The first thing I had to decide is what pattern was I going to use? What was my quilt going to look like? That was actually a no-brainer. As soon as I knew I was working with the Tula Pink squares, I knew I wanted to keep the squares as intact as possible because that would take away the stress of worrying about cutting Tula Pink fabric. I don't know about you, but I feel like the reason that I don't work with her fabric as much as I would like to is because I'm terrified that once I cut into Tula Pink yardage, I have forever ruined <laughs> the piece of fabric. There are so many different design elements that go on in Tula's fabric that I'm always worried about the position of the cut. I feel like her fabric is ripe for fussy cutting, but just to cut random squares out of it gives me a little bit of anxiety. Fortunately, the layer cake was already cut, so I didn't really have to stress about cutting that out from yardage. I wanted to lean into that and do something fun. Beth from Goody Goods on YouTube, I'll link her channel in the show notes down below as well, had done a quilt for a baby shower using, I think, the Country Rose line by Lella Boutique. I could be wrong on that, but it was a beautiful quilt. She did this several months ago, and when I saw the quilt, I tucked away that quilt pattern in the back of my head to do one day, and as soon as I knew we were pulling the trigger on the line work layer cake challenge, man, say that 10 times fast, I knew that pattern was going to be what I used. The pattern is called the Kaleidoscope of Stars, and it is a pattern that you can purchase off of Etsy. I will link to that pattern in the show notes down below as well. This is a wonderful pattern, and it's kind of a take on a sawtooth star, but instead of having legs on all four sides of the blocks, you only have legs on two sides of the blocks. And when you put the blocks into the quilt, you're kind of doing them in a topsy-turvy motion so that the legs are going in all different directions and it's really just keeping your eye moving all over the quilt top. I was really excited to work with that pattern, but I had to figure out what fabric was going to work with the layer cake to make that quilt come to life. And I figured the best way to complement a Tula quilt is to bring in some Tula solids. Normally, a Tula pink line has some really bright, like, punchy in the face colors, especially the new Everglow line that she's got coming out. This stuff looks like it could probably glow in the dark. I am definitely thinking, like, 1980s with those colors. But the line work line is really subdued, and there's not really any bright colors that are just jumping out at you. It's beautiful, and honestly, probably one of my favorite lines by her, 
but I wanted to bring those bright colors back in. And so I grabbed some fat quarters from Crimson Tate and I pulled out the fat quarters and the colors that were my absolute favorite and decided those were what I was going to work with. And I knew as soon as I pulled those bright colors that the background of this quilt had to be black. I wanted the black and the bright color contrast, especially with those graphite squares. I feel like the majority of the squares that were in that layer cake, had I put those against a white background, the definition of the square would get lost. There wouldn't be as much contrast between the white fabric and those squares. So I really wanted that black fabric and I'm really happy I did. Once I got the blocks all put together, it was time to think about borders. And this one, honestly, it gave me a run for my money. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do for the border. Originally, I thought I wanted to grab another Tula print, the geode print in a dark purple, and put that around the four sides for the border. I even went so far as to buy that fabric, have it come in, and as soon as I saw it, I knew immediately that was not the fabric that needed to be in the border of this quilt. I contemplated it for a while, sat on it, and eventually pulled the trigger and just extended the background. I didn't want to take away from the sight of those beautifully, brightly colored star legs of that quilt with anything else in the border. So I just took more of that background fabric, added a nice thick border to all four sides, and that left me with a design element where it looked like those star legs were just floating. And that is exactly what I was looking for. When it came time to quilt this, I decided to take the quilt top and challenge my friend Beth to quilt it and bring it to life. Beth is a huge Tulip Pink fan and is not afraid of the bright color palette that she uses. She also has Pro Stitcher on her machine, which can give her the option to do a computerized edge to edge design over the quilt. And I don't have that option. I did not want to spend the time custom quilting this quilt top. It would have taken me forever to get it done. So I decided to send it off to Beth and told her she had total control, total design choice over the thread color, the design pattern. It was completely up to her and I just wanted to be surprised when I got it. She did make a video showing what she did, why she did it, all of that fun stuff, and I would highly encourage you to check that out. I will link to that video in the show notes down below. She turned that quilt around super quick, packaged it up, and sent it back to me. When I got the package, I had Jason <laughs> record some footage of me opening the box. Okay. And I was met with these two tiny little packages. One was the leftover backing all packaged nicely and wrapped in multiple layers of saran wrap. And the other was the quilt equally wrapped in saran wrap. That's actually a genius move if you ask me because that protected both the backing and the quilt from any sort of damage that could have made it through the box to the fabric. I'll show you first. <gasps> OMG. That's gorgeous. Right. Turn it around for me. Oh. oh my gosh. Wow. Beth took this quilting job as an opportunity to make some content of her own. After all, this was a collab. So in the show notes down below, I have linked to a video that she's posted where she talks about the design choices that she used, how she quilted it, all that other stuff. So I encourage you to go check that video out after you finished watching this one, of course. Once I got the quilt back, I squared it up and I got to binding, like literally that night. That purple fabric that I had originally bought for the borders, I knew needed to be the binding. I love how I have just this really pretty 
purple frame around that entire quilt and it just pops against the back as well as the front. So that's the story of how the quilt came together and how it got finished. But anytime a quilt finishes, I like to look back on it and figure out what were the lessons that I took away from that project. And there are a couple of things that I want to share with you. The first lesson is really about the construction of the quilt top. The pattern has you using half square triangle units to build out the star legs around those squares. And that is a perfectly acceptable method and it will work. However, I thought when I was putting my quilt top together that my background was directional. Spoiler alert, it wasn't. But because I thought it was directional, I started cutting out rectangles to make flying geese units. And I decided to put my quilt together using flying geese to build out those star legs. In hindsight, I feel like the flying geese units, while it produced a little bit more waste because I had the cutoffs, I feel like that was a more efficient way to get the blocks done. And I would recommend it if you are putting this together, especially if you're using a background fabric that is directional. The second lesson that I learned is really just about facing your fears. The second lesson I learned is to face your fears. Tulip pink fabric is something that has always intimidated me. I don't know how to cut it. I'm afraid of the color. I'm afraid of cutting out the wrong design part of the fabric, all of the things. And I got to tell you, if I had to take this challenge, even with the line work line that I absolutely loved using yardage, that fabric would probably still be sitting on my shelf. I don't think the quilt would ever have been finished. It's not that I didn't think the fabric was pretty. It's that I was afraid I was going to ruin it by cutting into it. So my recommendation to you is if you have a fabric line that you just really like, but you don't know how to cut it, you don't know how to use it, consider leaning into a pre-cut. A charm pack, a jelly roll strip, or a layer cake would be an ideal way to allow you to create with that fabric line while taking the stress of how to cut it off of your shoulders. I found once I had that freedom of not cutting the yardage, the whole process was so much more enjoyable. And I actually even realized I really liked some of those bright colors in that fabric. And I'm kind of excited to work with more Tula fabric in the future. The past couple of weeks have been super busy. My mom is here and I am teaching her how to quilt by giving her a pattern to work on. And we're doing this every step of the way. And I'm really proud of the progress that she's made. But I've also done some traveling with my mom. Over Memorial Day weekend, she and I took a road trip up to Detroit. And while I went on to Chicago for the New Kids on the Block convention, she stayed behind with my Aunt Joyce. Now, my Aunt Joyce is the family member that I remember growing up as being the quilter. She made a couple of quilts while I was growing up. I remember her doing those things. And so I like to show her what I've made. And I happened to have a quilt with me when I went to Detroit. A couple of years ago, Corey Yoder did a free block of the month on her website called Spring Brook Blossoms. I'll link to it in the description box down below in case you want to pick up the patterns. It is a fun sew along and I chose to do it in the ombre fairy dust fabric and I really loved how this thing came together. I pieced the whole thing myself, I quilted it myself, I bound it myself, and I slept with this quilt every single night. When I traveled, the quilt went with me. Every time I went to bed, I went to bed covered up with that quilt. So when I went to pick up my mom from my Aunt Joyce's house, of course the quilt was with me and I wanted to show my Aunt Joyce. I brought the quilt in, unveiled it, raveled it out for her to see, and her jaw hit the floor, told me how beautiful it was. And it was that moment, it was in that moment that I knew that the Springbrook Blossoms quilt was not coming home with me. I wanted my Aunt Joyce to have it. It made me feel so good to give somebody that I love something that I love. So the quilt now lives 
happily at my Aunt Joyce's house in the Detroit area. Does mean, of course, I don't have a quilt now, so I gotta make a new one. If only I knew how to make a quilt. Hmm. Might have to figure that out. I will say I have been sleeping every night with the Kaleidoscope of Stars quilt. I really need to think of a name for that. So if you've got an idea for what that should be named, I would love to hear it. Let me know in the comments down below. This quilt, though, is on borrowed time. It already has an owner. I am gifting that quilt to my friend Karen, who I refer to as my New Kids on the Block bestie. We do the New Kids on the Block concerts together. We go on the cruise together. She is a wonderful friend. And that quilt is very much going to her next month when I see her. So I've got just about six weeks to make a replacement quilt. Good thing too that that one's moving on because I will say it's not quite big enough. It's great to cuddle with in a chair, but if you're stretched out in a bed, you can choose whether you want your shoulder covered or your feet covered. So if you're making the Kaleidoscope of Stars quilt, and I'm pointing over there because that's where the quilt is, but if you're making the Kaleidoscope of Stars quilt, my recommendation is going to be make it a little bit bigger than just the five across by five down if you intend to have it as a bed quilt. And she? Zebras? Mine. Yours? Can you find the black polka dots? Yes. Find a black circle. Touch it with your finger. What's your favorite color? Green. green. Green? Point to it. Let me see you point to green. <coughs> Can you touch it? Touch the green. Touch the purple. Touch the blue. Very good. Touch the yellow. Good job. Thank you, friends, for checking in on my video. Don't forget to check out Beth's video where she shows you how she did all the quilting. And I'll see you guys all next week. Bye.